Hello, my brother and sister. My home is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Welcome to this Hope Cast from the Fountain of Hope Christian Church. I am Reverend Dr. Charles F. Marshall, the senior pastor. This is a place where we encourage spiritual growth and nurture God's children to take care of self, community, and the world through Christian education, radical hospitality, authentic praise, and worship, and service. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in. Welcome to the Fountain of Hope, and we're so glad that you're here with us today. Our prayer is that you are blessed by something today that will encourage you along the way. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you today for this opportunity to worship. We thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us this day how you've kept us yet another week. And Lord, for each of those persons that are joining us, Lord, bless them right where they are. You know their needs. If there is a financial need, Lord, bless them. If there is a, a, a health need, Lord, bless them. If there is a relationship need, bless them. If there are any other needs that they may have, Lord, touch right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing and how you continue to work in us, through us, and around us. Lord, we just thank you for all your many blessings we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We want to share with you a scripture today that is coming from the book of Psalms. Yes, yes, yes. The book of Psalms. It is coming from the 17th division, beginning at the first verse, where it reads, Hear me! Lord, my plea is just. Listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. It does not rise from the deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. Through you probe my heart. Though you examine me at night and test me, you will find that I have planned no evil. My mouth has not transgressed. Though people tried to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent through what your lips have commanded. My steps have held to your paths. My feet have not stumbled. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we just want to share with you a moment. Here, enjoy. Hello, this is Dr. Bertrand Panik. Um, I'd like to talk to you about um, habits and mindset. Um, if most of us are from cultures that do things that are customary, for example, there are certain foods that certain people eat at Passover. There are certain foods at Thanksgiving. There are certain food you eat at Juneteenth. And some of these diets are diets that uh, go way back when uh, labor was different, the lifespan was different, the healthcare was different, and um, we carry on and pass on our culture. There's nothing wrong with passing it on, but I would just say to start taking a look at your, your portion control. You know, it's very, I know there's a lot of food that are really, they really taste good, but you don't have to gorge in them. You can just taste them and have a good memory about that. Because what ends up happening is those type of diets, sometimes some of them promote earlier onset of your diabetes. Some of it is genetic, yes but you can have earlier onset because of your habits. And also, if you bear in mind that uh, larger portions should also come along with uh, increase in, in your exercise regimen, because uh, that means you have more caloric intake, you need to burn more. For example, if you're training for a half marathon or a marathon, you might do something called carbohydrate loading. Carbohydrates aren't all bad. And some of us right now, we, 
we tend to have a diet that's more meat based just because the protein diets have really gotten popular but i would uh i would i would urge us to take a look at the levitical diet leviticus 11 has a lot of those recommendations and the reason why i'd like to recommend it is i'd like for you to look up the blue areas in the world there's an island off japan and um there is only one place in the united states that has the blue area the blue area is where people live a longer life their lifespan is about 10 15 or 20 years longer than the normal population now if you look at the hebrew diet as they were wandering through uh on their way from egypt to the promised land you would notice um, that it didn't include a lot of the things that's common in our diet. And it's not a matter of going to heaven or hell necessarily, but it's just there's less allergic reaction, for example. Uh, it doesn't promote shell, shellfish. Well, there's nothing wrong with shellfish, and it's pretty delicious, but uh, over, overindulgence uh, will, will also promote um, cholesterol problems. Uh, most of the time when I'm doing surgery, if I scrub somebody with betadine solution, uh, if you're allergic to shellfish, there's a good chance you can have an allergic reaction to that. So I have to switch to a different rinse, chlorhexidine gluconate. But you've had to have had an exposure to it in order to have a problem. So I just want you to keep some of those things in mind. The area in America that has the highest lifespan, the blue area, is the area surrounding Loma Linda University. So just Google blue area and see what it is. Their diet um, tend to be more of the, the, the Hebrew uh, kosher type diet, let's just put it that way, and it promotes better health. So uh, the Bible's laws are not necessarily just to promote salvation. It's also while you're here is to promote you in better health. The last thing I wanna talk about is, hi, this is Dr. Bertrand Bonnie. Um, it took me about uh, 10 to 12 months before I decided to, to get vaccinated. And as you know, um, there are risks with vaccination, but, where I sit in what you might want to call the food chain for my family and for my employees, there are 15 employees that depend on me not to be sick, um, especially with this pandemic. Uh, ever since last March, uh, I worked through the whole pandemic and the protection of proper masks, protection of um, gloves, even when I'm on the outside going to the store, the protection of being mindful of how you interact with people in terms of um, touching and so on. And um, basically washing hands, keeping your distance and, um, and spend some time outdoors also. That helps promote other things like vitamin D levels could be high, that's good for your bones. And that's pretty good, but what happened to me over the course of studying all the different vaccines, I, I decided, well, let me think about this. The symptoms for those who are vaccinated are less severe, especially involving the pulmonary, you know, your breathing, your lungs. And so to put me at risk, for example, for a lung problem and the post, the post COVID complications, I, sat and thought about it and prayed on it and come to think of it if you were to get a lung infection and 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 you were to be intubated your chance of having a good recovery is decreased i remember in anesthesia doing intubations on patients and i remember having patients coming in out of anesthesia for recovery and i remember people who have been intubated because they've been in trauma situations and that's not that's not a good situation to be in so if you measure the risk benefit ratio having the vaccine would decrease your pulmonary complications so that's a good thing not having the 
vaccine is also good if you could get away with not catching the disease. But if you did and you had the lung complication, there's a good chance that you would end up dying. Or worse yet, if your body immune system is good, that you may pass it on to your loved ones, your parents. So we should always bear that in mind when we're thinking about um, whether or not weigh your risk versus your benefits and just see where that goes. Uh, and this is Dr. Bertrand Bonnick, just talking to you as a concerned healthcare worker. Protection worked well for me over the first 10 months, but at this point with, with a lot more people being vaccinated, they've gotten uh, a little bit more lax, a little less careful, and they want to touch more, they want to grab your hands more and things like that. And I just say, um, let's not get rejoicing too quickly. Let's protect ourselves because our health is very important and God wants us to have good health so we could complete the great commission. This is Dr. Bertrand Bonnick. Thank you so much. My, 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 hope you were blessed. Amen, amen. Just a few things here and we just want to just, we're excited that you're here with us today. And our hope is that something here today will bless you. So uh, if you want to reach out to us, feel free to reach out to us. Our email is fountainofhopeatl at gmail.com. That's fountainofhopeatl at gmail.com. You can look on our website. Our website is at www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com. And, uh, you know, you can send us a message through that vehicle. Um, also, if you want to connect up with us, you can get our newsletter. Uh, just subscribe there and complete the information and, and hit the subscribe button and uh, you will be connected. Anytime you need us, there is connection information for you to reach out and you can join our Bible studies. You can join us through any of the other efforts that are going on in the church. So we encourage you uh, to reach out and be blessed. Amen. Likewise, uh, you're watching this on the YouTube channel, and so you can hit the subscribe button, which is located on your screen. You see the big red button that says subscribe? Please, 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 you hit that button, and anytime you go on YouTube, you will be prompted and be able to see uh, the many blessings that will be coming from the Fountain of Hope Christian Church. Likewise, uh, we do want to encourage you uh, to give. Amen. Give, give, give. Give is just as much and part of the worship as all the rest. So uh, if you want to give, you can sow a seed and offering uh, by looking at PayPal at, at Fountain of Hope. PayPal, look at the top of your screen at Fountain of Hope. Also, you can go to the website, Church, and there uh, you can give on the website, or you can mail uh, to Fountain of Hope Christian Church, P.O. Box 55039, Atlanta, Georgia, 30308. Amen. Uh, and all of that is available on the website. And if you'd like to just send from your bike, you can also do that as well and send from your bike. So uh, whichever method you want to do, feel free to participate. And let us just pray for you who are, are giving and even those you who have decided not to give to them. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you for all those who are opening up their heart to you, Lord, and blessing this ministry with their gift. Lord, we just ask that you would bless them. Bless them, bless their gift, uh, that it may return to them 70 and 100 fold. And for those that are unwilling to give, Lord, we ask you to bless them today that they may receive manna from on high, that they may receive something from you today that you may be glorified through this ministry. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Certainly, we just want to be let you know how much we appreciate you and how much we know and uh, that God is looking down upon us right now. Uh, and he is, his spirit is moving and you will be blessed just by being here. Amen. There is a word. Amen. 
if you would look in the book of Acts, the 12th chapter, let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to be able to, to be your vessel. Lord, let me decrease that you might increase. Let the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, that your people may be encouraged, that your people may be empowered, and that your people may hear you through me today. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for all that you're doing. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Coming from the book of Acts, the 12th chapter, I encourage you to read the, the entire chapter, but I just want to focus on the seventh uh, verse right now. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell and he tapped Peter on the side and woke him saying, get up quickly and the chains fell off his wrist. Verse eight, the angel said to him, fasten your belt and put on your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Now let's look down further in verse 12. Uh, verse 12 says, as soon as he realized, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose name, whose other name was Mark where many had gathered and were praying, 13. And when he knocked at the outer gate, a maid named Rhoda came to answer, verse 14. On recognizing Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the gate, she ran in and announced Peter was standing at the gate. In verse 15, they said to her, you are out of your mind. Hmm. Today, we just want you to expect an answer. Expect an answer. Expect an answer. Yes, yes. There is death and life from our tongue. God has given us the ability to speak into the universe and by faith, watch those things come to pass. No, I'm not saying that we uh, have some power like, you know, Samantha on but which that you have that watch TV or something like Harry Potter. No, 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 no. You know, God tells us over and over to watch that what we say, your mouth, your tongue, our mouths can be glued to build up or a sledgehammer to tear down. Also be careful what you speak over someone because the same thing may happen to you someone that you really love may receive what comes out of your mouth. Mm. Yes, we need to get away from uh, this uh, thing where we say, uh, I'm playing, I didn't mean that, you know, or, or say something like, uh, you know, I, I'll take it back. But you can't take nothing back. Taking back words is like a plate that is broken. Once you drop the plate, it falls on the floor and it is broken into pieces and you can glue it back together and use it again. Yes, but it's still a broken plate. It's a broken plate that has been glued back together. Guess what? Glue wears out over time. Uh, the plate may be together, but it won't be the same. Uh, no, no, no. And so watch what you say and speak. The same thing applies to your prayers. When you say prayers, expect an answer. It may not come today. It may not come tomorrow. It may not even come this year, but God answers prayer. The King James Version of the Bible says in James 15 and 5 and 16, it says, confess your faults one to another and pray. Pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. God has given us the ability to talk and walk with God since the very creation. Adam talked with God, Eve talked with God. And if we look back at the great stories in the Bible, most of them talked with God. Uh, this story in the book of Acts is no different. The, the church had begun at Pentecost where God empowered the saints to do great things. However, being a part of the early church was no easy task. 
Remember at Pentecost, the people came together and got on one accord and the Holy Spirit filled all of the people. And from that gathering, there were two primary leaders that arose uh, as the birth of the church took place, Peter and Paul. Some people followed Peter and other people followed Paul. So uh, people were beaten, they were mistreated, they were imprisoned, they were even killed for being a part of the church. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we are blessed today because we don't deal with that magnitude in America. But there are those around the world that are still experiencing that. And, and King Herod had killed James, the brother of John, at the same time he put Peter in prison with the intent of making an example of Peter. Uh, when Peter was arrested, the church began to pray for Peter. Mm, the saints got together and started calling on the name of the Lord. What would happen if more of the saints began to pray instead of getting on Facebook and putting all the stuff that you put on Facebook? What would happen if we prayed instead of tweeting? What would happen if we prayed instead of texting uh, telling everybody the bad news instead of praying about the person who is experiencing bad things. What would happen in this world if more people began to pray about North Korea, pray about health care legislation, pray about uh, the COVID situation, pray about inequities, pray Acts 12 and 5 says the church prayed without ceasing. That means they did not stop. Praying without ceasing means not stopping because you don't like me, not stopping because of what is on the news, not stopping because of what the doctor says, not stopping because your children, your husband, your wife, your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, they don't like it. Not stopping. Praying without ceasing means all the Time. So, so first of all, I want to lift up to you, prayers will be answered regardless of your location. Mm. When you talk to God, God will hear you no matter where you are. Psalm 139, 7 through 9 says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Mm. Regardless of your location, God hears you. You have to talk to God, though. Hey, wherever you are, if you, you can't say anything, then just think on God. Meditate on God. What am I saying? Whatever, wherever, however you find yourself in a situation, nothing is too great for God. Sometimes God may be waiting to see if you trust him enough to talk to him. Will we call on the name of Jesus in prayer? John 14, 12 through 14 says, Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I'm going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If my name if, if it's in my name, you ask me for anything, hmm, I will do it. When Peter was in the prison, they called on God for an answer. They called on God to do something about the situation. Uh, are you uh, in a place? Are you, does your faith strong enough to just call on God? Rather than talk to people about the problem, Tell Jesus about it. Rather than get on the phone and talk about the person, pray for them in your prayer closet. Hey, because when you pray to God in earnestly, uh, the second thing is that answers come at the right time. When you call on God, we must understand that God's time may different, may be different 
from what we want. The, his time is different from our time. The answers may not come when you want them. Uh, you know it, but it will be right on time. Also, we must understand that the answers may be yes. They may be no. And sometimes they may be wait. Oh, some of y'all don't like that. No, no, no. Sometimes you just got to wait on God. You might not get the answer right away, but if you look for the answer, God will answer your prayer. See, when David was being chased by Saul to kill him, David called upon the Lord and God heard him and answered him. Uh, and he said, you know, answered him, saved him. David said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. God will provide. Yeah, when, when there was drought in the land, Jacob called on the Lord. And God provided water when there was none. God will provide. When, when God answers a yes, guess what? It's a done deal. Ask the soldier whose daughter had died, but Jesus raised her from the dead. Ask the man who was possessed by the demon. When Jesus cast the demons out, the man was made whole. Sometimes the answer, though, is no. <laughs> Y'all don't like that one. No, no, and no is not a bad answer. No, it's all right, too. Ask the apostle Paul who went three times to the Lord to have whatever that was that he wanted to be removed to be removed. We don't know what it was. We don't know how it was, but we know whatever it was, it troubled God. It was something that kept Paul from being totally uh, healed or totally free from. He, Paul said in accepting that his request was not granted, y'all heard that right, not granted, he learned that God's grace is sufficient. Sometimes that no is keeping you from being in a place where you can get hurt. Sometimes that no is keeping you out of a relationship that is bad for you. Sometimes that no is putting you in a, a job, keeping you from that job that will, will hurt you and literally may even kill you. And when God gives you a no, sometimes God doesn't grant our request because God knows the best things for us. All sickness is not unto death, but God's grace is sufficient. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are people living with breast cancer, prostate cancer, HIV, diabetes, high blood pressure, leukemia. Keep going on. The list goes on and on. But they, they may have tough days, but they trust in God, and God allows them to wake every morning till it's time to go home. Some people suffer with bad people in their life, mm. but God blesses them to move through each day. Some people live with, without being rich, but God bless them with enough to make it through each day. Sometimes the answer is no, but with God, all things are possible. Remember that. Uh, with God, we find strength to move. We find strength to live strength to breathe, and strength to give thanks. Yes, yes, yes. And the other answer is just wait. Wait on God. Wait on God. We get impatient because we want the answer right now. We want whatever it is that we're asking for, we want it right now. God can make it happen right now because Mark often talked about Jesus making things happen immediately. Yeah, but the children of Israel left Egypt on their way to the promised land. But what could have taken a few days took 40 years. God said, wait. We don't know why they had to wait, but it may have something to do with how they complained to God. They weren't ready yet to go into the promised land. They, they complained about having manna to eat every day. They, 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 they would do things that were contrary to what God had told them to do. Wait is not a bad answer. It just means that the answer is on the way. Ask the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, not five years, 12 years, not seven years, 12 years, she wanted to be healed. And for 12 years, this woman sought medical attention, uh, said she had spent everything she had trying to go to the physicians of the day. And she was not here for 12 years. She looked, 
for the answer to heal. But on that 12th year, she met Jesus and touched the hem of his garment where she was made whole. Her answer came at the right time at the right time. So knowing that God will answer prayer, I want you to remember this, that you need to pray looking for the answer. Oh, I'm helping somebody here today. Pray looking for the answer. Peter had learned that God can do anything. Peter knew that when he was in prison, God heard the prayers of the saints and sent angels to free him. So when Peter said in 1 Peter 5 and 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you, uh, Peter was saying, I tried him, <laughs> hallelujah, and I know God will answer prayer. Peter knew that God could put an, an ear back on a man after he lost his temper and cut the man's ear off in the garden with Jesus. Peter knew that God could calm the sea and allow a man to walk on the water. Peter remembered when he was with Jesus and saw Jesus walking on the water and asked Jesus if he could come out to meet him. You remember the story. Jesus bid him to come and Peter walked on the water as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. Oh, remember that. As long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. Peter remembered, and, and when he took his eyes off Jesus, he sank in the water. But, but even when he sank, Jesus was there to grab his hand. What am I saying? Praying, looking for an answer. Keep the faith and keep praying. Cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Peter remembered that when they had fished all night long and didn't catch anything, and, and the answer came to, to cast the net on the right side of the boat. They, they caught so many fish and struggled to bring them in. Mm. Cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. So when Peter found himself in jail, in prison, the church began to pray. And while they were praying, God sent an answer. While they were praying, a light shown in prison where Peter was. While they were praying, the angel of the Lord appeared and Peter said, put your clothes on and your shoes, it's time to go. While they were praying, the angel said to Peter, follow me. While they were praying, Peter walked through the first gate and then through the second gate. While they were, oh, you're going to get this. While they were praying, Peter found his way to the house where the church was praying. And he was at Mary's house, the mother of John. While they were praying, Peter knocked on the door and Rhoda came and answered the door. While they were praying, Rhoda didn't open the door because she was so surprised to hear the voice of Peter. While they were praying, Rhoda ran in and said, said, guess who was at the front door? Hmm. Hallelujah. Peter kept on knocking while they were praying. Yes, yes. And when they finally came to the door to see who it was, they were amazed to see that their answer to their prayers was standing at the door. God had delivered Peter from the prison and he showed up at the door. Hallelujah. When you call on them, do you expect an answer? When you ask your prayer, do you expect an answer? It's time for you to activate your faith today. You need to activate your faith. Trust in the Lord who will not leave you. Lean not to your own understanding, but activate your faith because while you are praying, God is working on the far side. While you are praying, God is working on the right side and the left side. While you are praying, God is getting in that thing. And see, the thing is, he answers prayer according to God's will, because he's just not going to give you one thing, because he's going to fix something with someone else uh, that is praying and fix something with someone else that is praying and then fix something with someone else that's praying. So by the time your prayer is answered, there have been five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
12, 15, 20. Oh, somebody going to get it. While he's praying, he is working that thing out like nobody ever could have imagined. Expect an answer to your prayer. May God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer. Let us pray for you. For those of you who are, are, are trying to turn your life over to Jesus today, Today, Jesus is saying he heard you. And this is the time to say, I yield. I turn my life over to Christ. Oh, Heavenly Father, for these that are turning their life over, Lord, we pray for them. Bless them. Keep them. Strengthen them as they go on this new journey, Lord. Walk with them. And Lord, connect them up with someone to help them along the way as they turn their lives over to you. And for those that have already turned their lives over, Lord, we ask that you are blessed. Strengthen and keep them on their journey as they continue to trust in you, reminding that you hear them, you're with them, and you are for them. Lord, we just thank you for all you do. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Let us share in this, this, this sacrament as we remember the, the table that, that God has presented for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. And you remember that, that God created this, 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 this gift of love through offering his son, Jesus Christ, who who offered his body and his blood for the, our remission of sins. Amen. And so as we remember this, Lord, we just thank you right now for this opportunity to come to your table. We ask that you would bless these sacraments, bless this cup, bless this bread, as we remember the death of your son, Jesus Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, who died and rose from the dead, yet sits on your right hand. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come to the table and opening this table to all who may come. We thank you. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. During the season of Passover, Jesus and the disciples uh, went into the upper room. And while in the upper room, he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it. And he shared it among the disciples. He, he broke and said, this, this bread represents my body, which was given for you. Take, eat. Likewise, he took the cup and he blessed the cup. And he said, this cup represents the blood that was shed for the remission of sins. For as often as you drink of this cup and eat of this bread, you remember my death until I come again. Amen. God bless you. Take, drink. Amen. May God bless you as you remember this, this great gift of love that God gave through his son, Jesus Christ, to the world, to you and to me. Thank you, and may God bless you. Thank you for joining us today in this whole cast. Our prayer is that something was said that will bless you and strengthen you as you make your journey. If you want to join us or need us, reach out to us. Go to www.fountainofchristianchurch.com. Now unto him who is able to keep us from and to present us before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, Majesty, Dominion, and Power.